Maine police continue the investigation into the deaths of four people in the town of Oakland. And an Auburn woman is injured after her car strikes a moose. It's Friday, November 6th, and your Nescom connection starts right now. From the campus of Hassan University, this is your Nescom Connection. Hello everyone, I'm Connor Newton. And I'm Nick Blazak. Police continue an investigation into the central Maine town of Oakland as they try to determine what caused a man to gun down his girlfriend, her sister, and another man, killing all three before taking his own life. Police say the only survivor was a three-year-old girl who was unarmed. Police identified the victims as the child's parents, Amanda Bragg and Michael Mazzurro, along with Bragg's sister, Amy DeRosby. Police say DeRosby's boyfriend, Herman DeRico, shot them in an Oakland apartment Wednesday night before killing himself in the driveway. A 9mm handgun was found next to his body. Pol public information officer Stephen McCoslin says police are trying to determine what sparked the violence. McCoslin says one of the many 911 calls came from one of the w wounded women before she died. He says the little girl is in the care of her grandmother. It is that time of year again where students sign up for next semester. At Huston University, signing up for classes can be a little confusing, especially for new students. Jackie Hilton is live on campus with that story. Jackie? Thank you, Nick. It is indeed that time of the year. Starting Monday, November 9th at 5 a.m., seniors will have the opportunity to select their classes. Within the next few days after, the next class will have the options to follow suit. What should students do to prepare for class registrations? It is highly recommended for students, besides getting a good night rest, to speak to their advisor to select their courses, pre-select it. That way, when it comes to selecting their courses, students will know what classes to take for next semester. Would that help to ensure their spot in the class? That's exactly it. There are a lot of prerequisites, and advisors will help the students get into the courses that have prerequisites. Nick? Thank you, Jackie, for that report. According to Southern Maine officials, a high, a high school student has died and three others were injured when the vehicle they were in crashed into multiple trees and a telephone pole in Bruxton. Superintendent of Maine School Administration's District No. 6 says that the Thursday morning crash involved Bonnie Eagle High School students. The crash took place on the Turkey Lane and was reported around 3.30 a.m. Officials say three students were hospitalized with serious injuries and a fourth person was declared dead at the scene. Their names are not being released until the families can be notified. State police say an Auburn woman was critically injured when her car struck a 1,000-pound moose on the main turnpike. Police say Taylor Norcross and Frank Gatto of Auburn hit the moose as they were traveling down the northbound lanes in Gray just after 8 p.m. Wednesday. Norcross suffered head injuries and was taken to Central Maine Medical Center in Lewiston. Gatto was not injured. Police say the moose went over the top of the car, taking the roof off. The moose died in the crash. Supporters of a proposal to raise Maine's minimum wage say that they have more than enough signatures to put the issue on the statewide ballot. The campaign it's announced its collection of 30,000 signatures on Election Day, bringing its total to more than 90,000 signatures. That's well over the minimum needed to qualify. The proposal for the statewide ballot would raise the Maine's minimum wage to $9 in 2017, then by $1 a year until it reached $12 by 2020. After that, it would be increased to the same rate as the cost of living. When we come back, judges make a ruling related to the El Faro, the cargo ship that was lost at sea. And students at Huston tell us what they think of helicopter parenting. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. 
I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Helicopter parenting is causing a buzz on social media. An article in Salon Magazine by education author has many parents second-guessing themselves. In the article titled, The Epidemic That Actually Isn't, Alfie Cohn shines a light on helicopter parenting and how common it really is. Brianna Beers joins us from the newsroom with that story. Bree? Yes, research says that in more than 9,000 students surveyed, only 13% of freshmen and 8% of seniors thought that their parents were interfering with their lives. In other words, most students believe that parents had, did not interfere with their lives. We asked people on Husson University's campus what they think. Helicopter parenting, I don't really believe in that because if you're going to be hovering your kid all the time, they're not going to learn by their own mistakes and they're going to have their own experiences. So I don't think that's good for them in the learning process or them in their growing to become an adult. I'm against helicopter parenting because I grew up with a mother who is very old fashioned and believes that you need to learn the basics in the house, cooking, cleaning, doing laundry. And basically I was taught by my grandmother and my mother that you have to do everything on your own and you have to grow up on your own and just learn how to do everything on your own. Otherwise, nobody's gonna hand anything to you in life. It's all for helicopter parenting because kids need guidance these days. They're just so misleaded by the distractions in the, in the world today. You know, with all these drugs, alcohol, it's out of control. So I think the parents need to be there and I think they need to hold their hand. I, I just don't think that's the proper way to teach whatever lessons you're trying to teach. I mean, particularly, let's say sports in particular. I mean, even my, uh, you know, I have a five year old daughter that plays club soccer and rec soccer, and you see parents that are over anxious, you know, again, being a helicopter type parent. And uh, again, I don't think the kids get the the message they need to get from that type of tactic. Khan's article is adapted from his book, The Myth of the Spoiled Child, where you can get more information on helicopter parenting. So Bree, many students are saying helicopter parenting was beneficial, but can it be psychologically damaging to a young person? Actually, yes. Studies have proven that helicopter parenting actually plays a huge role in students having anxiety and even a diminished sense of well-being. Connor and Nick, back to you. Thank you. Bree Beers from our newsroom. A police shootout in New Jersey leaves two people hurt, including an eight-year-old girl. Authorities say a police officer was chasing a man through the girl's neighborhood in Osbury Park when the two exchanged gunfire. The gunman was shot in the leg but was expected to recover. The officer was not hurt. Witnesses say the girl was home watching TV when a bullet grazed her forehead. She was treated and released from the hospital. It is not clear if the shot came from the officer or the suspect. There may be more trouble ahead for the family of an Illinois police officer who authorities say killed himself after embezzling money for years from a youth program he oversaw. An official who has been briefed on the investigation says authorities are now looking at the wife and son of Lieutenant Charles Glinowitz, who allegedly stole thousands of dollars over the course of seven years. His wife helped him run the youth program. 
authorities who had investigated the officer's death as a homicide announced Wednesday that it was, in fact, a suicide and that he had tried to make it appear as if he had been killed in a confrontation with several suspects. It's still not clear what happened to a Russian passenger plane that went down over, the, over Egypt earlier this week. However, U.S. officials tell CNN intelligence suggests the terror group or its affiliation uh, from ISIS planted a bomb on the plane. British Prime Minister David Cameron says it's, not, it's more than likely a bomb that brought down the Metrojet Flight 9268, but the White House warns the U.S. does not have all the answers. Uh, at this point, the United States has not made our own determination about the cause of the incident. Uh, however, we can't rule anything out, including the possibility of terrorist involvement. The comments come as Russia and, Reg and Egypt warn about jumping to conclusions as to what caused the plane to crash. The Metro jet broke apart in midair, killing all 224 people on board. Concerns that the plane may have been bombed have forced the cancellation of numerous flights from one of Egypt's well-known resort towns. Right now, thousands of foreign tourists are stranded in Egypt. Big changes in the country of Colombia. The constitutional court there has lifted restrictions that prevented same-sex couples to adopt. The court determined that same-sex couples have the same suitable characteristics as heterosexual couples to raise children. The resolution decided over a claim of unconstitutionality against the country's children and adolescents code. A federal judge has set the deadline for damage claims filed by relatives of crew members lost aboard the El Faro U.S. Dis the El Faro. US, U.S. District Court Judge Harvey Schlesinger set December 21st as the deadline for the case. The El Faro sank on October 1st due to engine failure in the midst of Hurricane Joaquin. More than five lawsuits have been filed. The ship's owner, Tote Maritime requests limited liability in the case and is looking to contain damages to about 15 million. An attorney representing two of the families says that they will contest the limited liability claims. And there's a lot going on with football and other sports. Alex, what's going on? Yeah, we got big games coming up for a couple Huston sports teams. Alyssa Thurlow is going to join us live with a report on that. We also have Bruins and Celtics highlights coming up right after this. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Everywhere that we go, he makes people laugh, makes people smile, and I feel like I have that quality. He's the one who always takes me fishing. I watch golf with him. <laughs> I watch him cook, because when I grow up, I want to be a cook, too. I mean, he has the same faces like this. Dad is the one, when you fall, that picks you up. That unconditional sense of presence and um, reassurance is really what makes him my father. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Get your f***ing out of here. You're not sitting here. Yes, I am. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Nivis with sports. Winter is quickly approaching, which means big games for fall sports teams. Two Eagle squads have huge matchups this weekend. The only unfortunate thing is one of them is down in Vermont. The Eagles football team will be taking on Norwich at 1 p.m. in Northfield, Vermont. Both teams undefeated in conference play. 
If Husson wins, they clinch back-to-back -back ECFC conference championships. If the cadets of Norwich University win, they would have a great chance of clinching the conference title. Back here in Bangor, the field hockey team will host UMaine Farmington in the North Atlantic Conference Championship game. That is also slated for 1 p.m. down at the Winking Complex. Like the football team, the Lady Eagles are going for back-to-back -back conference championships. It would also be their fifth NAC title in the last seven years. The Hudson football team is soaring high this season. The Eagles are coming off a win at home against SUNY Maritime, but the challenge this week is gearing up to play on the road. Nescom Sports reporter Alyssa Thurlow joins us live with more on that story. Alyssa? Yeah, Alex, the Hudson Eagles football team is on a six-game win streak, and this weekend they will look to make it to seven. The Eagles are traveling to Vermont to take on Norwich Cadets. Now, Norwich and Hudson are tied at 5-0 and in the ECFC Conference, and while most teams struggle playing on the road, the Eagles have had no problems this season. I caught up with head coach Gabby Price to see how the team adapts to what they call a business trip. But in other respects, so you really that's all you have is each other, and so you kind of bond more. And our guys have done, our players have done a tremendous job on the road because of that. They've, they've just been very focused and kind of business. It's a sport, but kind of business and not just a joyride. So they've been terrific, so it's helped us in that respect. Now, the Eagles will head out today for a 1 o'clock game start tomorrow. Live stats and video of that game will be broadcasted through the Hassan Athletics website. Alex? So how does the coaching staff go about who chooses going on these road games? Well, Alex, as of yesterday, the coaching staff was still making their final decision as to, as to who was going to make this weekend's road trip. The coaching staff starts assessing players at practice on Monday, and they continue throughout the week. Now, many factors go into this final decision, like years that the player has played, their depth, their overall experience, and their contribution to the program. Now, head coach Gabby Price says that it is a difficult decision to make, but he knows that all the guys work extremely hard and that they will look to do so on Saturday as well. Alex, back to you. Okay, Alyssa, thank you for that report. The New England Patriots are one of four teams with a 7-0 record entering Week 9. This, we the, this weekend, they'll be taking on the 3-4 and four Washington Redskins. Tom Brady and the Pats have been rolling this year and have had plenty of time to prepare for Washington after beating the Dolphins eight days ago. The Redskins also had ample preparation time. They were on their bye this past week. Washington is hoping for a much-needed offensive boost as they expect star receiver Deshaun Jackson to play for the first time since opening weekend. The Bruins were in Washington last night, putting their perfect 5-0 record to the test against the Capitals. We're going to take a look at those highlights. First period, Bruins on the power play. Jimmy Hayes is going to score, which is big news because that uh, snaps a scoreless drought of 199 minutes and 30 seconds against the Capitals. Right here, Tuka Rask makes the save, but Alex Ovechkin puts in the rebound, falling onto his fanny. That ties the game at one aside. Early in the second period, Capitals threatening again. Dmitry Orlov, a blast from the blue line. That's going to trickle past Rask and make it a 2-1 lead for the Caps. A few minutes later, five on three advantage for Washington. They take advantage. That's John Carlson right there scoring the goal on the pass from Nicholas Backstrom. Three to one, Capitals. Now last gasp for the Bruins as they pull Rask for the extra attacker. Tory Krug turns it over, and that is going to be a score for Carl Alsner, who puts it in from center ice. Capitals go on to win this game four to one. They hand the Bruins their first road loss of the season. The Celtics will be at home to take on the Washington Wizards tonight at 7.30. Wednesday night, they were playing their first road game on the young season when they took on the Indiana Pacers. Let's pick up those highlights late in the first half. Jay Crowder shoots at the length of the court, and he banks it in. Three points, right? Hold on one second, though. Crowder was inbounding the ball, and you can't score when you're shooting it from out of bounds. So unfortunately, no bucket for Crowder and the Seas. That would be a big bucket loss there, but at the time, it was laughs all around for the green team. Pick it up in the fourth quarter, Indiana by three. Monte Ellis in the paint. Puts up a tough fall away to give the Pacers a five-point edge there. A little bit later on, this is Isaiah Thomas driving and then steps back for the three-pointer. He led the way for the Celtics with 27 points. The big offensive game for Thomas getting the start. One-point game now with two and a half left. Ellis kicks it out to Paul George on the baseline. That's a three-pointer for him. George led the way for the Pacers with 26 in this one. Indiana by four with two minutes left. Skip ahead, game tied at 98. Monte Ellis uses a screen, draws the foul on Avery Bradley. He goes to the line to shoot the two free throws, and he would make them both. Indiana took a two-point lead. Coach Brad Stevens uses his last time out to draw up one last play for the Seas. This is Isaiah Thomas driving baseline. He's going to kick it out to Bradley. 
but Bradley's three-pointer here is going to come up a little bit short, and the Celtics come up short as well as they lose 100-98 to to the Pacers. Coming up, Calvin Cutler will have your local weather forecast, so stay tuned. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you can too. Share your heart. Share your love. Bring home your forever friend. Make a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at theshelterpetproject.org. Right, Nika, cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika with the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw on the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Radio's all about personality. Hey, they can't see you. Today, Coach Nason is preparing students for success. Another practice day. Fade up. Fade down. Fade up. We need a brand image. Go. Okay, here's the game plan. Mescom's Calvin Cutler joins us now with the weather. Calvin, what do we have going on out there? Oh, thanks, Connor. So anyways, this weekend it's going to be pretty cloudy. We're going to see uh, temperatures in the mid-50s, but it's going to be slightly, you know, it's going to be pretty good uh, temperatures, but, you know, it's uh, still going to be, you know, cloudy to say the least. So moving on to our current conditions here in Holton, um, highs are today, it's uh, 51 degrees. Eastport, we have uh, temperatures uh, 56. Bangor, it's a crisp 53 degrees. Augusta, we're looking at 51. And Portland, almost to 60. Uh, so not quite, but it's going to be 58 degrees. Uh, tonight, we're going to have uh, partly cloudy skies with lows uh, being 56. And um, tomorrow, we're going to see partly cloudy skies with highs of 53. And uh, tomorrow night, we're going to see a low of 32. And so here's your five-day extended forecast. So we're going to see Saturday, partly cloudy skies with temperatures uh, highs of 53 and lows of 32. Sunday, we're going to see partly cloudy skies with highs of 42 and the low of 30. And then Monday, the sun is going to come out, finally, um, with a high of 50 degrees and a low of 30. So that should be fairly nice. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to see mostly sunny skies uh, with highs of 53 and lows of 34 degrees. And then finally, on Wednesday, we're going to see mostly sunny skies, highs of 56, and uh, lows of 39. Looking forward to that sun on Wednesday, Calvin. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, when we come back, a member of the audio department talks about his trip to the Bahamas. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. 
Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Each fall, audio students from the New England School of Communications take a special trip on a cruise ship. But this trip to the Bahamas is all about working and learning new skills. Troy Candelupo was one of those students this year, and he's here in the newsroom with us today. Troy, how did this opportunity arise? Well, um, a alumni of Nescom from the 90s, his name is Tim Cabral, uh, owns a company called Cruise Productions. And uh, what he does is he has all of the upper level live sound kids come out um, onto the cruises and work. And it's a way to give back to the school and also a way for him to recruit for uh, new potential employees. Uh, and uh, what were some of your responsibilities on this trip? So we were basically stagehands. Uh, we'd be working with uh, all the bands there, worked with acts like um, Neil McCoy and Craig Morgan. And we would set up all the instruments to microphones, et cetera. And uh, when they were done, we'd tear it all down. Uh, Troy, what would you say you took away from this trip, ultimately? I think it was a, a great opportunity to see what the real world's like. Uh, I think the instructors here do a very great job uh, making the lab seem like the real world. But um, you know, it's, it's not the same unless you really get out there and do it. And I, I think that was the, the greatest experience. Oh, definitely. Thank you very much for that uh, information, Troy. Uh, good luck in the future. That wraps up this edition of Nescom Connections. For more news, sports, check out our YouTube channel, um, Nesc and Nescom Journalism. I'm Connor Newton, and on behalf of Nescom's video production department and journalism department, thank you for watching.